Welcome to our lecture online. In the previous video, we established that the velocity of Mariner 10 when it reached Mercury was about 49 kilometers per second. Now, the flight path that, Mercury, that uh, Mariner 10 will take is such that at this point, Mercury 10 will be at the perihelion position, the closest position to the Sun in its path, but that will be the aphelion position for Mercury, the farthest position in its orbit around the Sun. And so what we can then say is that the distance from Mercury to the Sun when Mercury is at its aphelion is 69.8 million kilometers. That will then become the distance away from the Sun for Mariner 10 in its path when it is it when it is wow that's hard when it is at its closest distance the perihelion distance of 69.8 million kilometers so what we're going to do now is we're going to try to calculate the ellipticity or the eccentricity of the orbit of mariner 10 and from that we should be able to calculate the velocity for the for mariner 10 at the position when it's farthest away from the sun at aphelion so how do we do that? Well, we have two equations we can use. We can say that the eccentricity is equal to 1 minus the distance at perihelion divided by the semi-major axis, or the eccentricity is equal to the distance to, from aphelion to the sun um, divided by the semi-major axis minus 1. In this case, since we know the distance to the perihelion, we're going to employ this equation. But first, we need to calculate what the distance is of the semi-major axis. And for that, we can use Kepler's third law. We can say that the period squared in years is equal to the distance of the semi-major axis cubed. And so we can solve for the semi-major axis, which is equal to the cube root of the period squared. Of course, this is going to be in astronomical units when this is in years. So we have to convert 107 six days which is two Mercury years, which is the time it will take for Mariner 10 to go all the way around and meet up with Mercury again. We divide that by the number of days in a year to get the time or the period in years. We, take the, we square that number, we take the square root, and we end up with 0 0.615, which is what we call the semi-major axis for the orbit of Mariner 10. Now for the eccentricity. So for the eccentricity, E, that is equal to 1 minus the distance to perihelion, which is 69,800,000 uh, kilometers. But since we have to have that distance in astronomical units, we're going to have to divide it by one astronomical unit, which is about 149,600,000 kilometers. So now we have the distance, uh, where are we here? The distance from perihelion in terms of astronomical units. So we take 69.8 million and divide it by 149.6 million, which is the distance, the average distance between the Earth and the Sun. Now we have to take that and divide it by the semi-major axis in astronomical units, which is what we have over here, which is 0 0.615. And so now this should allow us to get the eccentricity of the orbit of Mariner 10. So we take 69,800 divided by 149,600. That is, oop, let me try that again. 69,800 divided by 149,600 equals. We're going to subtract the, oh no, we first have to divide it by 0 0.615 divided by 0 0.615 and take that and subtract it from 1. And that gives us eccentricity of 0.241. So let me do that again. So we take 69,800 divided by 149,600. So that gives us the distance to perihelion in astronomical units. We now are going to divide that by this. So divide by 0.615, which is the semi-major axis of the orbit. And then we subtract that from 1. And that gives us the eccentricity of 0.241. So that gives us an eccentricity is equal to 0.241. Compared to the eccentricity of Mercury, which is 0.206, it is actually more eccentric. Hmm, eccentric is kind of 
the eccentricity of the orbit is greater than the eccentricity of the orbit of Mercury because you're trying to get way out there so that the orbit will take exactly two Mercury years. If we now want to go ahead and calculate the distance from the Sun to the point farthest in its flight path at F helion, so that would be the distance of F helion, so let's go ahead and do that, so this is the distance of F helion. How do we do that? Well, we now grab the second equation right here. And what we can do is we can rewrite that equation. We can say that the distance to F helion is equal to the eccentricity plus 1 by moving this negative 1 to the other side. So now we have eccentricity plus 1. And then we have to multiply that times the semi-major axis. So we multiply this times A. And that will now give us a distance to the farthest point in its orbit. So in this case, this is equal to 0 0.241, which is the eccentricity of the orbit, we add 1 to that, and we multiply that times the semi-major axis of 0 0.615 astronomical units. So let's go ahead and calculate that. If I find my calculator, here we go. So we have 0 0.241 plus 1, and multiply that times 0 0.615, that gives us 0 0.763 astronomical units. So this is equal to 0 0.763 astronomical units, which of course puts it past the orbit of Venus, which is about 0.7 astronomical units. And if we now multiply that times 149,600,000 kilometers, that gives us a distance of about 114 million kilometers. So this is equal to approximately 114 million kilometers away from the Sun. So that means that Mariner 10 was now in an orbit where at the closest approach it was at about 70 million kilometers and at the farthest approach it was at about 114 million kilometers in its orbit. At the next video we are going to then calculate what the velocity will be at that farthest point at the aphelion of the orbit of Mariner 10. And that's how it's done.